Behavior pattern. Now, a recurrent way of act by an individual or group towards a given object or given situation. Used in a sentence, I think at this point it's pretty clear to see that Anision has exhibited a behavior pattern that can be deemed predatory towards young, vulnerable women. Hey guys, it's Shannon, and today we are going to be talking about Onision, a person who very early on in my channel I made a promise to never talk about. I straight up told my husband before I even started YouTube that I would never talk about Onision. I would never talk about Greg because to me, Greg is the person who no matter what, no matter how low he goes, he benefits when people talk about him. I was always very aware that if I were to make a video on Onision or a review of something he did, it would probably garner a certain amount of views, but it would also probably lead to more traffic going to his many channels and watching what he does. I was aware that he could use that to get more money, to get more fans, and at the end of the day, that isn't what I wanted for him to do. I don't want him to be able to support himself by continually ridiculing women with eating disorders, spreading misinformation about Shane Dawson being a predator, and collecting and rating photos of young girls. If anything, I just want him to log off, maybe get a different job, and just leave the world of online ego stroking to someone who's less of a piece of shit. Onision to me is like a pimple or a cyst. You can throw the best medicine and cream on top of it, you can change your diet, and do everything that you should be doing in order to make it go away, but it will still sit there, slowly growing more and more and more, and the only real cure is to go to a doctor and get the cyst drain and cut out, but the only doctor who can do this procedure seems super reluctant to do it. That doctor in this case is YouTube. YouTube is the metaphorical doctor. Now, I don't want to shit on our corporate overlord YouTube. I did just find out that a video that I posted that I am not allowed to make any money off of, I cannot monetize it in any way, shape, or form because it was deemed too raunchy for YouTube still has multiple ads playing on it, meaning that YouTube profits off of it, but I can't, even though I'm the maker of it. Um, even though I just found that out, I don't want to completely shit on YouTube. They do allow me to make money sometimes because while Onision can still post to this site for sure, they've actually suffocated Onision's channel growth on YouTube quite a bit. Looking at his channel now, it's pretty clear that all of his channels with over a million subscribers are pretty unprofitable. At time of recording, his latest video has less than 10,000 views, and the average of the last 10 of his videos is 13,000 views, which is really fucking bad for a channel his size. I mean, that's not even good for a channel my size, and his is literally 10 times bigger than mine. That to me is a straight up sign that despite the channel posting often enough, pushing out content, making fun, weird faces in the thumbnails, having colorful titles and editing, putting all the work into the appropriate places that should have work put in into it, that YouTube is automatically sending his channel to shit island, population him and everyone revolving around him. It's so bad that even him clickbaiting doesn't guarantee him views. On his channel, Uh Oh Bro, he even has a video titled, Is Billie Eilish a Dude? Which is a deliberate attempt to get her fans to watch just to leave a comment or to send him hate and boost his numbers. But literally so few of Billie Eilish's rapid fans gave a fuck about an Onision video. It is still under 20,000 views. Let me tell you, I made a positive video about Billie Eilish where I talk about how a company stole art under her name and said, literally, she's not at fault. And I still got hate from Billie fans. I still got sent swarms and swarms of hate from that. But even they looked at this and thought, ew, Onision, fucking gross. So Onision is in kind of a weird position as of late. He's no longer making money on any of his channels or making enough money to get by, really. People so widely hate him that other YouTubers make their whole other career out of making fun of him and mocking him. And he is just stuck being the sebaceous cyst on the ass of YouTube. So you would think that he would see that, see how he is absolutely positively the least successful YouTuber on the planet and nothing that he is doing is availing him online and he would try to make a change. But you'd be wrong because he wouldn't actually do that because change is hard and it's so much easier to keep being a piece of shit than to actually do something online. But we're not here to talk about Onision's online presence because Onision isn't just a piece of shit online. Because if that was the case, if Onision was just this made up character who he puts on in front of the camera, who is just a person in La La Land, then he probably wouldn't need to have every single person in his life sign an NDA. If Onision was a great charismatic guy behind the scenes, the friendliest YouTubers on the platform wouldn't be utterly repulsed by his every move. And he certainly wouldn't have a habit of preying on young fans of 
of his. You see, Onision has a very well-documented, very public history with women, and literally none of it is good. The same way family vlogs document only the best moments of their lives and their family lives, Greg likes to document all of the worst, displaying it as if it was something he should be proud of. It's like when a cat brings you a dead bird in bed and you're just like, why, can, can please stop doing this, I do not want this. So that's what we're doing today. We are going to go through every documented public relationship that Onision has had and how we got to the pattern of behavior that we're seeing today. We are gonna go through, we are going to analyze this and see where the pattern started and what the pattern can tell us. The first example of him doing this on his channel was his relationship to a woman named Shiloh. Before I tell you any part of this, I do want to let you know that since the dissolution of their partnership, Greg has stated that everything that happened was fake, everything was done for views, all the drama, everything that I'm about to tell you, all of it was completely and utterly fake. However, that should cause you to wonder about the type of person who would fake such a thing for views and then get mad at people who witnessed it and saw it happen firsthand and the people who felt like he wasn't lying and the people who believed him that when he said he wasn't lying because he said, no, this is all real, this is all happening. And so they trusted him as his word then, him getting mad at them now because he said, no, it was all fake, even though they trusted him before. So why should they trust him now? Like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a lot to think about. You should wonder what kind of person would put their viewers or put their partner through all of that. You can't do something online, say it's all real 100%, then turn around and say, just kidding, it was fake. Then get mad at the people who thought it was real because you told them it was real and who don't like you because they thought it was real and say, well, you didn't hear, it was actually fake because you just told them it was real and they don't like, you know, you know. Anyway, let's get into it. Onision or Greg met Shiloh through his YouTube channel where she contacted him through his email. At the time, he was married to another woman named Sky. Guy and him separated and he started dating Shiloh. He started featuring her on his YouTube channel more and more and then dropped a video called Shiloh Forgot About Me. In this video, he shows Shiloh having an episode and subsequently losing three years of her memory and forgetting him. This video was put up before the era of crazy YouTubers pretending they had lost their memory for a fun little prank. So people found this video to be disturbing and way too real for them. They also criticized Onision for not taking her to the emergency room and instead shoving a camera in the face of a woman who was clearly unwell. They later broke up, leading him to post a video where he, trying to show how unreasonable and unstable she is, he is again shown shoving a camera into her face when she isn't doing well. Again, all of this was purported now to be fake and not at all real, but while it was going on, people took it at face value the way Onision told the world to take it. That was his first YouTube public widely displayed relationship and breakup. It consisted of him showing himself to be an asshole partner as well as a cold hearted manipulator and people quickly found themselves not liking the real life guy who is behind videos like I'm a banana. He then later dated a girl named Adrian. Adrian and Greg met once again because she was a fan of him and met via his fan forums where after she had posted a couple times he replied to her and sent her his private email address. Now again this is a very similar pattern to what happened with Shiloh. You have two women who contacted Onision first because they were fans of his. So there's already a very clear power dynamic here where he is placed in a position of power. Now that alone isn't bad. I'm not saying you can never be friends or be close to the people who are your fans. However I am saying it's alarming when this is the way that person chooses their mates and chooses the people they want to be around. Instead of choosing people who aren't worshiping the ground you walk on, you're choosing people who are overtly showing their interest in you and throwing themselves at your feet. It's like if Kevin Jonas or Gerard Way had read my fan fiction about us falling in love, then asked me out. I would have been so starstruck that if they had asked me to do anything that I was uncomfortable with, I wouldn't know how to say no to them. It's unhealthy and it's weird. And it's also fairly strange that Onision broke up his original marriage to be with a fan. But let's keep moving forward. Him and Adrian date for a little bit and then break up. And she sends her friends a letter about what it was like being with him. And then the letter gets leaked. The letter straight up is very illuminating and frustrating to read. But if you want to get a vibe about how weird and manipulative Greg is behind the scenes, I definitely recommend you read it because holy shit, it's a doozy. Him and Adrian break up. He goes back to Shiloh, starts shading Adrian every chance he gets, and then turns into a shitstorm once again. But the main thing that happens out of that is that Greg puts up a video that says the drama and everything that happened between Shiloh and him was in fact real, which he now says is a lie. Again, for the most truthful person on YouTube, it's all very confusing and his continuous flip-flopping between what was real, what is fake, what is a character, 
or what is not. Further just emphasizes how untrustworthy he is and how weird this all is. Him and Shiloh end up breaking up again like I said. He puts out a video saying everything that was real and then let's enter Kai. Kai is Greg's current husband who is a transgender man. Kai has gone through a couple different names over time but to avoid any confusion we are just going to call him Kai for the duration of this video. Again if you want to call them any other names they do have a couple that's on you but we're gonna call him Kai. It is also important to know that what is currently going on with Sarah what's currently going on that we will get to Kai is also at fault and just as scummy as Greg. People usually give Kai a pass and cite that Kai is probably a victim of this as well and Kai has been with this person the longest but at a certain point Kai is an adult who is allowing this to happen under their roof and Kai is a person who's purposely putting people in this position so I don't I don't currently see him as any sort of victim in this narrative. When Kai and Onision met Kai once again establishing a pattern of behavior was a fan of Onision and would obsessively tweet him. After Greg and Shiloh had broken up for the final time, Greg decided he was going to act like a teen and tweeted, soulmate, where are you? To which Kai replied, right here. That tweet, that cringe-tastic tweet exchange sparked their love because Greg saw it and started to direct message Kai, another obsessed fan who had proven that they think Onision is just an ooh ooh sweet baby boy with a big heart who has never done anything wrong ever, despite literally doing so much wrong at that point. Again, we see a lack of balance in the relationship dynamics and we see that he willingly chooses to be with people who are only going to treat him with kid gloves. Now at the time they started dating Greg was 26 and Kai was 17 which means he was very much under the legal age of consent. Now I see people talking about legal ages of consent all the time and how when's too much too much and like older men being attracted to younger women as long as they're over a certain age is fine. I just want to take a moment to say as a 26 year old woman who lives in the real world most age gap relationships like this one where the person is still in high school and the other person is almost 10 years out of high school it doesn't work you see between the ages of 17 to about 21 to 22 you go through a profound period of change not just in environment but who you are as a person your mind your brain hasn't finished developing so you're going through more and more and more the person who I was at 17 is not who I am now and it certainly wasn't who I was when I turned 18 and who I was when I was 18 is not who I was when I turned 19. You are changing so radically during that time that it's hard to be in a relationship and it's especially hard to try and relate to an older adult who's already gone through that change. It doesn't work. There's no reason why an adult would want to be in a relationship with anyone that age other than you know the distinct reason to prey on them because they are so young and they don't know the world really. But that's just my opinion. Kai and Greg started dating and and before they even met in person, Greg proposed to Kai over Skype while he was still in high school, which is a bad sign. They got married and they have two children and then Kai comes out as bisexual. Now, as someone who's attracted to more than one gender myself, I was like, cool, another person who likes more than one gender. However, after Kai came out, things got decidedly weirder because Onision decided to kind of prey upon the fact that Kai both liked men and women and pressured Kai into dating a woman that way he would know how it felt. Now this to me fed into the narrative that bisexual women and pansexual people are more or less sex fiends who need two partners to be satisfied and need more sex than anyone else and will never be in a monogamous relationship which simply is not the case. I am pansexual and have been happily committed to the same man for a very long time. My very close friends are bisexual and have been in happy monogamous relationships without wanting to cheat for a very long time. It's it's not like because someone says they're attracted to multiple genders that we are constantly looking for extramarital affairs. It's a weird idea that's pushed by the same people who think girls only kiss girls for attentions and lesbians need a good dicking to get them straightened out. It's bullshit. And if you were watching Onision and Kai at the time, it was pretty apparent that Greg was really into this idea, but Kai was just kind of going along for the ride. It felt super fucking clear that Kai felt uncomfortable with the whole ideal, but Onision himself was 
the one who was stoked for it. Because despite the fact that he said that this new woman was going to be coming into the relationship and she was just going to be Kai's girlfriend only and Greg wouldn't have any part of the relationship, it was very clear that Greg wanted it to be a throuple situation. Enter Billy. Kai met Billy, who was a fan of both of them at the time, continuing the cycle of pulling young fans into your personal life and exploiting their love for you for sex. Billy and Kai started dating and then once again it became very clear that Kai didn't like the idea of Greg and Billy being intimate with each other and Billy was going to be Kai's girlfriend only. But don't you worry that did not stop Billy and Greg from sleeping together and both cheating on Kai. Now the ensuing situation included Greg asking Billy to get I'm a liar tattooed and be literally chained up in his basement something he described as totally hot. But once again we see a pattern of him wielding his power over people who are both devoted to him as a fan and a person and getting his way with people who are still significantly younger than he is. Now after that, after that failure of adding a new person into your supposedly stable loving relationship, you would think that was it. We have two people who realize that having an open relationship doesn't work, who have dedicated themselves to each other and promise to be monogamous after experimenting with other people. And that should be the end of it, right? But no, no it's not. Because that was just the prelude, motherfuckers. We haven't even got to what this video is really about. So let's talk about Sarah, shall we? The girl who went to live with Onision and Kai when she was 16, lived with them until she was 18, who they spoke to sexually, and then had sex with four days after she turned 18. Now, Sarah's situation shows the pattern of behavior we were talking about and observing with Greg and Kai, except this time it's even worse. And just as a quick recap, this man ended his marriage to be with a younger fan, shoved a camera in her face, and either made up a complete mental breakdown plot for YouTube fame, or really did decide to use her mental illness for YouTube fame. Then went out with another fan who he met via his message board, tried to coerce that fan to have sex when she didn't want to, even crying when she said she didn't want to have an intimate relationship with him because she was tired at that time, then saying she had a dirty vagina and was a bad rebound after they broke up, then getting into a relationship with someone who was so underage he was still in high school and his parents didn't approve, proposing to that person before they had even met, then later coercing that person into sleeping with another person in front of him and with him for his own sexual gratification. That's everything he did before right now. So let's jump into the Sarah situation because it's somehow worse than all of that. Because in this instance, it wasn't someone who was near the age of consent or someone who really could consent and who could be taken into a different state where the consent laws are a little bit different so you can be intimate without breaking any laws, which um, is something that Greg did. This time, him and his husband Kai took a young girl who was a huge fan of them, who was 13 when she started talking to them. They used her difficult home light against her and brought her, a now 16 year old, into their house for them to take care of. Saying that back, it sounds outlandish, like a Matilda situation or something people would write about on Wattpad. Someone is living in a non-ideal situation and then out of nowhere, their favorite YouTube personalities invites them to come live with them. It's outlandish and it's sinister, gross, and pretty fucking abusive. So like every person in Onision's life that he wants to be intimate with, Sarah was a supporter of Greg and Kai. She would tweet to them, send their support whenever she could, and both Greg and Kai took notice of her and ended up befriending her at age 13. Now as someone who was once 13 and looked up to people like a human, I can only imagine what it felt like to Sarah. Feeling of knowing that this person who you look up to, to know that they are taking the time to notice little old you and they're responding to you, that matters and it's important, especially when you're that age. 14 is like the peak age of being a part of fandoms, of being a fan of someone, where girls go buck wild for bands and icons because they look up to them so, so, so much. So for Sarah, that connection meant a lot. They all became fast friends, which is strange because Greg is literally 33 years old and really shouldn't be friends with a 13 year old teenager who is that young. That's inappropriate, that's weird, especially because she's a fan. But YouTube's resident Pimple didn't think that was odd. So him and Kai maintained this friendship for a couple years before on a particularly bad night they decided to exploit Sarah's home life and have her move in with them. Like I said earlier Sarah's home life wasn't ideal at the time and she was in a very vulnerable position. A position where she really needed people who genuinely cared about her to help. And when Greg and Kai saw this they decided to continue the cycle that Greg had started with Shiloh and quickly moved Sarah in to live with them and making her dependent on them. Had nothing else in the saga happened had they literally just moved this girl in for out of the kindness of their hearts and hadn't started sending her sexual texts and Greg hadn't
hadn't slept with her four days after she turned 18. There might have been a case that they actually did this because they felt genuine friendship with her and they wanted her to be safe, but uh, that isn't what happened, unfortunately. Like I said, Kai and Onision were sending Sarah sexually suggestive texts, sending her suggestive pictures, including one where Greg's penis is fully visible, and Sarah admits to sending some back, including a photo that she sent of herself topless to Kai when she was 15, which for all of you watching, which does qualify as child pornography. Before I go any further, I don't want to see anyone in my comments saying that Sarah is at any way at fault for this and that she shouldn't have sent anything back or any of that. She was a literal child. She looked up to these two creators as mentors and she thought they were her friends. She wanted them to like her. If they said, hey, do this for me, it makes sense that she would do it, if only to keep them talking to her. So literally, I do not want to see anyone in the comments saying jack shit about she shouldn't have done this and she's at fault here. You will literally catch these hands in a verbal fashion. Somewhere along the line, Onision must have known that what he was doing was creepy as hell. And based on every other time he had done something notably disgusting, he thought he might as well cover his tracks by having Sarah sign an NDA which is a non-disclosure agreement. This NDA was going to protect him from her ever going after him the way she has been. But frankly, I'm pretty stoked that she isn't letting him intimidate her with this piece of paper because I somehow feel like the courts would care a little bit more about him sending her sexually suggestive text messages and his husband telling a minor about his penis in vivid detail, things that she had screenshots of, by the way. I feel like the courts would care more about that more than her violating the agreements on a piece of paper that says promise not to tell my dirty ass secrets. So for about two years, Sarah lived with Onision and Kai as sort of a foster daughter, roommate, friend situation. They moved this girl who was half Onision's age into their house, let her live there, and then upon her turning 18, they were immediately intimate with this girl, which is sick, disgusting, and manipulative. It is insane to me that this person is still on YouTube. It's insane to me that Kai has turned into this ridiculous shadow of himself, willing to put up with any and all bullshit and allow Greg to do this. It's sick, it's disturbing, and it's just bullshit. Onision is a disgusting person through and through. He has no issue pressuring the people who are fans of him, guilting them into doing what he wants them to do sexually, and then maliciously going after people who don't listen to him. He has shown this time and time again with his intimate relationships with people. He showed it with Shiloh, he showed it with Adrian, he showed it with Kai, and he showed it with Billy. And now, he's continuing the cycle and the pattern of behavior with Sarah. I'm actually going to end this video with just a slideshow of text that Sarah has since released that were between her, Greg, and Kai, just for added context of this situation. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I know this video was a little out of place. I just really wanted to include his past behavior with women in this because I think it's super relevant to how we perceive what's going on now. Had he not gone through this same situation with 50 other women, and 50 other like different people, it would be a different situation. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If not, tell me why in the comments down below. I will see you guys in my next video later.